Hello, my comrades. Welcome back to Scarborough, episode five, Biting Off the Bat's Head. Um, this episode is going to be focused on two figures that occupy space in my uh, psilocybin-addled brain. Um, the two figures I'm referring to, of course, are Ozzy Osbourne and Dave Ramsey. Um, before we get into that, I just want to kind of make some effort to make this current, hold up a newspaper, so to speak, uh, to document uh, the times uh, as these uh, episodes come out. Today is the, uh, the 11th of February. It is Super Bowl Sunday, and we are in Kansas City. Um, there's a lot on people's minds right now. Um, people, the people in Kansas city have one figure, um, who kind of represents us, uh, as a people. And, uh, I think kind of America at large at this point, uh, um, a man of celebrity that, uh, honestly might rival Michael Jordan at some point. And I am of course referring to Mahomes, Jackson Mahomes. Uh, Jackson Mahomes, if you're not familiar, he is uh, the younger brother of Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback. Um, Jackson is best described as the uh, Hunter Biden of the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, He has displayed behavior that is repulsive on... Uh, every level, from every walk of life, people are repulsed by the behavior of Jackson Mahomes. Um, he, uh, you kind of get the feeling with that guy that he is, uh, he's gay, but he's not really allowed to be that gay on the social media, um, presumably because it would ruin the Mahomes Christian brand, um, you know, <clears throat> which is interesting because, like, him forcibly kissing a woman. Jackson Mahomes got caught on videotape, like, forcibly kissing a lady. And uh, that did not ruin the brand. Um, you know, they're they're doing fine. And, you know, watching from afar, and I'm just a cynical guy anyway. I don't really care about football, but I, I don't know. I, um... I feel bad, of course. I think everyone feels bad for uh, Patrick because he seems like a good guy. He really does. I'll give him that. Um, but he is surrounded by monsters. Um, his his, bro- his brother is basically, in Game of Thrones terms, he would be uh, Joffrey Baratheon, um, the bastard. <clears throat> He's just... Uh, He's just a terrible guy. He's a very good uh, follow on Instagram. I, do you guys, I don't, I hope that I'm not the only one who follows people that they hate on Instagram, intentionally or unintentionally. But I, I, uh, I follow this painter named John McNaughton, who is uh, just, he, he, he's such an interesting case study because he's like this, this, uh, MAGA guy who just loves America. He loves the, you know, the slave owning founding fathers. Um, He's just completely, um, every stupid uh, patriotic um, sentiment that you could possibly brainwash uh, a human being into believing. He is just a sucker for it. and But he's somewhat of a skilled painter. He's able to kind of recreate this, like, neoclassical vibe. But his paintings are not only ideologically ugly, uh, because they are just straight-up uh, bootlicking, you know, just uh, unimaginative... Uh, 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 creations where it's it, it literally the images the paintings you see of like Donald Trump hugging Jesus and whatnot. Uh, I mean, goddamn. Um, 
those a lot of those originate from him. Um, and I follow him. I, I support him uh, <laughs> because I I get so much more enjoyment out of that than someone that I uh, agree with, you know. Uh, yeah, so let's get into the, the meat of the episode. Um, I called it biting the bats. Uh, I'm sorry, biting off the bat's head um, because, you know, if uh, – out of context, that sounds a little bit disturbing, um, and I don't know if I need to refresh your memory, but um, Ozzy Osbourne, who is a hero of mine and a lot of guys that uh, that look and smell like me, uh, and I, I wish to kind of uh, uh, pontificate, I guess, about why I like Ozzy Osbourne, what I see in Ozzy Osbourne. Um, and how he inspires me, and I think he inspires other people too, whether they're aware of it or not. But uh, Ozzy uh, was known for his stage antics in his uh, absolutely sacred band. I I am dogmatic about very few things in my mind, um, you know, and one of those things, the most important thing to me is... Uh, your opinion on Black Sabbath. If you are the type of person who... If you're the type of person who finds Black Sabbath to be over the top or abrasive or whatever, and you can't enjoy it, it it bothers me. It really does, because to me, you are missing out on... Um, you're missing out on a lot of important things if you're not okay with listening to Black Sabbath. Whether or not you're on LSD, which I, you know, tripping acid and listening to Black Sabbath's Master of Reality is a rite of passage. Um, you cannot fully develop. You cannot enjoy life uh, to its fullest until you've listened to Master of Reality while tripping. Um uh, Ozzy, of course, he uh, with his stage antics, he uh, he bit off the head of a bat at a concert. Someone in the audience, some very creepy metalhead, had a bat for some reason. No one ever really talks about that either. Like, what kind of a fucking uh, maniac brings a dead bat to a metal show? Maybe a fun person, honestly. I don't know. Um, but uh, the story goes, this fan threw the dead bat onto stage. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne picked it up and bit the head off of it. Uh, and I actually, I say dead bat. I it, I think it might have been alive. I don't fucking know. Um, interesting choice. Uh, the question uh, that arises, though, is, uh, is Ozzy telling the truth when he says that he thought it was a, a felt bat or a, a, an artificial bat of some kind. Um, and I want to believe that, honestly. Uh, I want to believe that he didn't have... Uh, or, or I want to believe that he had the, uh, um, the class or the dignity to not bite off a real bat's head. But I also kind of don't. There's a part of me that's like, that's kind of hilarious and uh, for a man who's um and he said this before Ozzy Osbourne does these things he acts like a public jackass um because he loves people and he li he likes being a legendary sinful uh <clears throat> imperfect chaotic guy um and I, th I think that that's what he does for people. He, he, on some level, we love Ozzy Osbourne because he reminds us of our childishness, our demons, um, you know, our lack of self control. Uh, but it, it, he offers just kind of a lighthearted. Um, that's just it's just him. He's uh. 
he's an absolute buffoon, but he's it's he's a buffoon on purpose. And I think that a lot of people with Ozzy Osbourne, um, if you bring up Ozzy, they'll say, and I'm sure that people will say in the comments here, honestly, they say the same thing every time. Like, oh, that guy fried his brain on LSD. And it's like, probably a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you're on to him. But he... He is smarter than people give him credit for. Um, I don't know. He's just, I, I think about him all the time. I think about the late night appearances that he made. Um, I'm trying to think of, I mean, who gives a shit, whether it was Letterman or, uh, you know, Jimmy Fallon, Conan, whatever. Uh, I remember this interview where he's t talking about he, he, Ozzy's stories are great. And they're to me they're funnier than any stand up comedian, uh, pretty much, because he's he's not a contrived uh comic talking up there. He's just a funny man. He the way he describes things, the way he tells stories is hilarious, and he gets himself into predicaments that make for great stories. Um and he has this story that he told uh and he, about being at home when his house got broken into. And Ozzy's like, I think in this story he was naked, which he's naked for a lot of his stories, if you've ever listened to him. But it's this anecdote where uh, Ozzy, you know, he's he, he decides to attack the intruder, which is a hilarious image in itself, Ozzy naked attacking him. And then he, he in the story he's telling, he goes, uh, and and then it, it hit me. I thought, well, what if he's gay? Um, insinuating that, like, this robber might not only be robbing them, but also might fuck him. Um, and it's just the way he tells it, he's so aloof. Um, he's, he's so childish. He's just, he's the king of, uh, he's the best rock star there ever was or ever will be. Um, he, uh, uh, also in the interest of being topical, there was some Aussie drama this week because he, uh, sued or, or he, he's threatening Kanye West, uh, or he didn't let Kanye, I think what it was, he, it was, he didn't let Kanye West sample, uh, war pigs, uh, in one of his songs. And, uh, I can, honestly, I can see why, um, you know, Kanye, it's a weird thing because obviously anti-Semitism is not good. We don't like anti-Semitism. Um, but in light of the war in Palestine, um, we've seen the propaganda machine sort of uh, weaponize anti-Semitism anti as a concept uh, to uh, justify or, or protect the uh, interests of Israel and their uh, the state of Israel, their entire... Um, kind of mythological uh, uh, right to be there. Um, you know, we all these things have been uncovered, and so anti-Semitism has become a thing where if you hear someone say it, it's like, hang on a second, what are you talking about right now? Are you talking about uh, criticizing the mass murder of Palestinian children? Or because that kind of anti-Semitism, quote-unquote, uh, is not anti-Semitism at all. Um, I don't know. So, anyway, Ozzy accused uh, Kanye West of being anti-Semitic, which he is, um, and from a right-wing perspective, uh, not from a... I, I, I don't believe... I, I, I don't know. I still view Kanye as... Um, I don't know if he's trolling all the time. I you can never really tell with that guy. Um, but I I have tuned out as a Kanye fan uh, long ago. Um, let's see. We we should probably move on. I want to one more thing that I I just want to say about Ozzy is that Ozzy 
I appreciate as an artist uh, myself who prides himself on um, just not giving a fuck. I want to more and more just not give a shit about opinions of people that were never going to like my comedy or my art in the first place. Um, and I respect that. And Ozzy is a great example of that. His whole fucking career, he has believed in what uh, what he was doing. His art um, with Black Sabbath, all of, all of that shit, they're, them pioneering, uh, bringing horror movie aesthetics into the music world um, and making scary, uh, which uh, in hindsight is not that scary, but... Uh, just dark satanic themes um and tying that into like in the song war pigs just very anti-establishment anti-war um uh themes um he is unapologetically himself uh and i i think that my point with all this is that uh, i i was talking in one of the episodes about gandalf how he's kind of a christ-like figure in a way um and i i don't think it's inherently wrong to have uh in your art like christ-like figures i i'm gonna talk soon about christian allegory and how i hate it for the most part but to me ozzy osbourne is i think of him the legend of ozzy osbourne i think of as a gandalf or a which he loves he loves lord of the rings he loves gandalf the black uh black sabbath has a song on their first album and it's gorgeous it has a harmonica in it and it's called the wizard and it the chorus of it says everyone's happy when the wizard walks by and i think he thinks of himself as a wizard um and i just i just love him um all right so on the other end of the spectrum um, let's get into the, the bad, the despicable, the, uh, the, the douchebags. Um, I, uh, I've been doing bits about Dave Ramsey for a while and, um, I am starting to feel like I'm having breakthroughs where I am really able to just speak my feelings on a matter, um, instead of thinking of it as like, just like, no, I told this joke this way, and it works that way. You know, you have to have a mix of that and then a willingness to try stuff that might not work on stage um, in the the interest of uh, just making your comedy natural. And I've, I've been doing these bits about Dave Ramsey. I'm trying to work them out, just why I hate him. I just think it's a funny uh thing to bring up and bitch about because it's something that i don't hear enough people bitching about but dave ramsey is a man uh you know he he's a financial guru uh supposedly and that's his thing he has this program he used to have i think his show used to be called financial peace that's a loose concept part of his branding financial peace it's just like um and on its surface it sounds like the greatest thing ever right uh you know in theory here's a guy who um has dedicated his life to uh helping people get out of debt in theory that's that's how it's presented. Um, and uh, what an honorable thing that is uh, on the surface. And if it is helping people be happier uh, and whatnot, good. Um, but I kind of, I just get fraud vibes from that guy. Um. I kind of feel like he, uh, I feel like he weaponizes, like his method of doing this, it, it, it's kind of the same vibes I get from like a multi-level marketing scheme where it's 
all the, you know, they have these examples of people that have turned their life around or whatever and uh, become millionaires and they own all these properties and, and it's just a, a complete, you know, pursuit of happiness, American dream, Lottie fucking da. <clears throat> um, and I think that it's, uh, it's one of those things where, um, a lot of people are into it, and yeah, I'm sure that stay, his his solution to uh, issues of debt and everything is always just stay home, don't spend money, um, you know, uh, and uh, truly like an anti-consumerist mentality, which is good also on its surface, and that's why I have a complicated hatred for this man. Um I like that aspect of Dave Ramsey that um, he encourages people uh, to um, not be consumer consumerist sheep. Basically, that's good. Um, but at the same time, uh, at the end of the day, he is not a guy who sees the system as being unjust. And, you know, he never questions uh, whether or not it's moral for these uh, fucking banks to um, do their evil bullshit. Um, and if he does, he's he's just he's a, a very smug, rich, uh, um, doesn't really have I, I don't feel like. I don't think that his uh, empathy for poor people seems genuine most of the time. And maybe this changed for him over time. Maybe he be became corrupted. But with the way that he has just capitalized on selling fucking ad space for whatever, timeshares, I'm sure. Like, I think I've heard uh, of him doing that. He he seems to endorse, I think I've heard him talk about fucking multi-level marketing and endorsing that shit. I think he's compromised. He is, a, you know, he is a guy who, uh, I, I would be interested to see the statistics between people who listen to his shit and actually get good results uh, versus, um, how many people are just watching for the inter entertainment value of it? The him lashing out at people and um, just shaming them for spending too much of their money. Which, uh, sure, I mean, if you uh, if you want to help people in that way, like teach people to have self control, um, I guess I can see uh, why that would um, not be the worst thing in the world. But I don't know. What about uh, what about living in the moment? You know, if you're talking about making people happy uh, and, and these people who are miserable because they uh, are in horrible, uh, just life squashing debt. I don't know, man. Um, what about teaching those people to live in the moment, to support their community, um, give their money to their community, help people while you're living, you know? Um, that's kind of, it's kind of the opposite of Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, I respect and I idolize and I want to live my life like Ozzy Osbourne in certain respects. I'm not an idiot, okay? I'm not going to do acid every day for a year or whatever he did. I'm also not going to bite the heads off of any living creatures. Um, but I don't know. I'm going to follow Ozzy Osbourne, who is a, a, a honestly, I think being a public buffoon, the way he does, the art that he's made, he's not perfect. That's for sure. We hope he's not a Zionist. Um, God, I hope that. But whatever, you know, um, he has lived his life uh, alleviating pain for people who are dark and feel pain, feel like freaks. Uh, um, he, uh, yeah, uh, he's the man. Anyways, 
Guys, this has been Episode 5, Biting Off the Bat's Head. I'm Aaron Scarborough. I appreciate you, comrades, for uh, for tuning in, and uh, stick with us. We'll see you next week. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.